Look at the map and look at the picture. The map shows you where I come from and what I have accomplished over the last 20 years of my life. So I'm a proud Egyptian. I have been working for one of the leading multinational companies in the oil and gas sector, in finance position, regional and local position, different countries, from the sunny Egypt to the slippery cold Norway, then to Morocco, South Africa, Qatar, and now in the Netherlands. The picture is a picture of my lovely family, my husband and my two daughters. And on top of it, I have an extended family in Egypt. <coughs> my parents, my sister, my brother and my in-laws who have been always there supporting me. So wow, it sounds that I got it all. Nice job, lovely family, a very strong support model in place. But it all depends on how you do define success. For some people, it is a large pay slip that they get at the end of every month. For others, it is a prestigious position or the title that they will carry for a few years. But for me, it was a bit different. So let's hold that thought for you know, some time and allow me to take you a few steps back and share some of my stories and specifically in 2001, when I looked around in my workplace and I didn't find any opportunity for career progression if I stay at my home country. It was very clear that if I want to grow in my role, I need to look for opportunities outside my home country. In my culture, my friends, my family will say, are you crazy? Enjoy what you got, stay at home. You have a lot of stuff, but for me, it was not fulfilling and it was not enough. So I was very honest with myself, very well understood by my husband. Then what I did, I looked around and I applied for an opportunity in Norway, which I got after some competition, some interviews, some tough questions, but I got the role. And it was extremely hard to sell such a decision to my mother, my mother-in-law. Everyone was saying, you will be divorced. This is, this is not the right way to move. But jointly, me and my husband, we took the decision. And this is because I, understood, I recognized and he supported me. If I don't develop, if I don't grow in my role, I will only have a negative impact on my surrounding, and more importantly, the people I love. So, we moved ahead, and the deal was that my husband, who's an engineer, would keep his business in Egypt, and I would move on, take my two daughters, grab and seize the opportunity in Norway, and it was a win-win. So on the plane, two daughters, two years and seven years, a nanny, and myself. Everything very well planned. Every tiny detail was planned ahead. But of course, life is not a dream. I didn't predict that the UDE, the immigration in Norway, will not find me fitting in any box, especially after the turmoil of September 11, an Arab woman coming to work as a corporate controller in Norway. So I didn't get the visa for my nanny. And I had to get a nanny every three months from home to take care of my kids. So it was not an easy ride. Full-time corporate controller, full-time mom, was a frequent visitor, my husband. But at the end of the day, when I look back, it was a success. And why would I say it was a success? First, because we have done it four times after. So if it didn't work, we wouldn't have repeated it. <laughs> but more importantly, because of five key main reasons. For me personally, I took a lot of positive stuff out of it. I grew, I learned a lot, not only the technical skills as a finance professional, but also understanding the differences, dealing with different cultures. 
And I met a friend of mine from university a couple of months ago when I visited home, and she was saying, I hardly recognize you with all you know, the locations that you worked on, and finally with your decision sending your daughter to study in Scotland by herself. But for me, it was unnoticeable. For my teams, it was a success, because personally, I had in all those locations different people, different hierarchy, different sizes of group reporting to me, and it was always in my mind a shared responsibility when it comes to their career, their development, their progression. Majority of them ended on the high performers list, and few have always valued the difficult, honest discussion that they are not the right match for the current organization where they work, and they stepped out of it. I think more importantly, when I reflect on my teams, is the deliberate decision that I took by me being more and more involved in their lives. I spent eight to ten hours per day with my teams. I'm so interested to know every tiny detail in their lives. So I was so involved in big events like marriage, frustration when you don't, you know, get it with the right person, delivering birth, all those type of things. So it was a success. For my peers and my mentees, it was also a success. For me, because when I come and I get approached to provide an advice, and you tell a real story, not only the positive stuff, but even sharing failures sometimes, had helped many of my colleagues, and few of them followed the same path. For my daughters, it was a success, because when I compare them to their peers at home, and I see how independent they are, they value difference, they have friends from every culture, nationality, and religion. They don't care. And coming from a very conservative culture, this is a big advantage. And then last but not least, more important, my husband who has always supported me with love and respect. We gave each other the space to excel. It was a win-win. But our key goal has always been how to keep this family close regardless. So what is success? I learned over the last 20 years that what got me over the tough time is the people that I dealt with. It's all about people, about getting the best out of every person you deal with, and more importantly, the impact that you make. So success for me, my legacy is, the quality of impact that every one of us makes every day in our lives. Thank you very much.